Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because God is good, good, and he's worthy to be praised. Um, brand new week today. Amazing Monday. There's nothing discouraging or crazy about today. It's all good because you're alive and well and uh, ready to see another day, ready to allow God to continue to do his work on the inside of you. And, you know, just really ready to face everything because you have an awareness of God's presence and his power. And, uh, you know, you know, sometimes I, 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 you may not do this, but I, I, when I get on something, I like to just stay on it until it becomes a part of, of my, of my life and my everyday life. And, um, uh, so good morning, everybody, you know, you're up, you're alive, you're well, this is going to be a great week an exciting week that we got coming up. A lot of good things are happening. Uh, just, just all is good. So we send blessings to you guys and, um, thank you for, uh, being here with us this morning. Love you so much. And we send blessings to those of you in Perth, Australia. We say you are blessed this morning, Macon, Georgia. Good morning, Greensboro, um, and Loganville, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, Georgia's in this house. Florida's in this house. Good morning to those of you in Kenya this morning, or maybe, I don't know what time it is there, but good morning. Those of you in Nigeria, Zimbabwe, praise God, the African continent is in the house, South Africa. We are <clears throat> sending blessings to you. Those of you in Canada, San Diego, Germany, Cali, uh, Virginia, we send blessings uh, to your life and to your situation today. We say that you are blessed. We send blessings to those of you in Fayetteville, Georgia, those of you in New York, uh, the um, thank God for World Changes New York and Pastor West. God bless you guys. We send blessings your way. <clears throat> we send blessings to those of you in Michigan this morning, in Alabama, Denver, Colorado, uh, in Iowa. We send blessings to you guys in United Kingdom, Shreveport. God bless you. Philadelphia, congratulations for your football team. Uh, we send blessings to those of you in St. Louis, Missouri, Tyler, Texas. God bless you this morning. Those of you in Arizona, we send blessings to you. Those of you in the Philippines, Winnipeg, we say you're blessed today. Regardless of the situation, we say that you're blessed. We're agreeing with you for your blessings ottawa canada we are saying that you are blessed san pedro california you're blessed in jesus name glendale arizona poland praise god you we, we say you're blessed zambia you're blessed today east los angeles you are blessed today switzerland you are blessed today italy we say you're blessed. Montgomery, Colorado Springs, we're declaring our blessings over your life. All over Texas and Lagos, we are declaring that you are blessed. In London, you are blessed today. Paris, France, you are blessed today. We declare your blessings. Bogota, Colombia, you are blessed. Detroit, we send our blessings to you today. Uh, Winter Haven, Florida, we say you're blessed today in Jesus name. Kenya, again, Queens, New York, College Park, Georgia. Yeah, baby. Uh, Louisiana, Compton, California. We send our blessings to you guys today. And we thank God that you are blessed, blessed, blessed. Praise God. Uh, Joseph, I'm praying for you and your mother and thank God that they're healed. God is a deliverer and a healer. I still believe it. Um, he'll give you wisdom to know what to do when you don't know what to do. We send our blessings to Brazil. Shalom. 
to Abuja. God bless you guys. Memphis, Tennessee, you're blessed. And uh, we're just thanking God that uh, all is well, no matter where you're logging in from. All is well. Pastor Kenny, thank you for that. I was, you know, that message yesterday was like God feeding me uh, utterance of how to say some things. But um, yeah, man, it, uh, it's a blessing of the Lord to, to be alive and to be well. And uh, Rhode Island, we send blessings to you guys this morning. And uh, Cleveland, you're blessed. And so, hey, we're gonna we're gonna continue along the lines um, with uh, dealing with this this powerful, in my opinion, uh, the most powerful message that God has sent to mankind, and that is this this gospel of grace. And grace is the power of the gospel. And Grace is that uh, almost too good to be true news <laughs> about what Jesus has done for us. And um, it, it's such a blessing. I, I, I'm excited about Friday because we'll be doing our uh, confessions live from uh, Los Angeles, California. Um, and and that's that's awesome. So we'll be meet, seeing some of you actually live on Friday. Uh, those of you who are connected right now from from L.A., uh, San Diego, that L.A. metropolitan area, it's going to be so cool to look out there and say, whoa, those are the people who've been logging in and, and, and doing it. So we're just going to all come together, do this confession uh, at 10 o'clock uh, straight from the Live Nation uh, facility uh, uh, to all over the world and do just what we're doing here except i won't be uh sitting here i'll be sitting in in there and and teaching so it'll be a little bit more extensive i've decided to just keep you on for the whole morning session if you want to stay there um so it'll, it'll be real good so can't wait for that to happen let's go ahead and um make our declarations today and then i just want to just get into the word on this this uh this gospel of grace which is the the power, the grace is the power of the gospel. And uh, and it's a, it's a blessing of the Lord. Say this out loud with me and mean it with your heart. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest in the shadow of, his, of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any desire, or, or excuse me, nor any disaster that strikes at midnight. Because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling place. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me 
his salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus, all is well with me and my house. God is continuing to work in me, changing my desires, and giving me the power to do what pleases him. I am Psalms 91 equipped. All is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. All is well. Praise God. I want to start in John chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, and I'm just going to give you about four or five scriptures here and just really go through this because I really want you to see this. But John 1, 16 and 17 says, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Oh, wow. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. John 1, 16, 17. Wow. Grace, according to the scripture, can be defined as God's fullness in the life of the believer. I thought about this in reading this. God's fullness. <laughs> man, I, God's fullness in the life of the believer. So remember what it says, out of his fullness. We have all received grace in place of grace or grace upon grace, grace in place of grace already given for the law that was given by Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so grace, according to this verse of scripture here, uh, can be defined as God's fullness in the life of the believer. Man, I received that God's fullness. Man, think about that, man. You, you, we're not talking about your fullness. We're not talking about your uncle's fullness. We're talking about God's fullness in the life of a believer. And um, uh, I like what, what he also, when he said this to the Apostle Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul went on to say, and uh, this is 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Paul went on to say, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Now, what this, mean, what, what this meant was that the grace of God enabled and empowered him in his weakness. Let me read that again. I, I, I want you to get this. Uh, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Okay. So uh, this is when the Lord said this and he said this to, to Paul. He, he said, my grace is sufficient. What? More than enough. It, it's, it, it's, it's all you need. Okay. Because, you know, last week we talked about grace being abounding provision and paul is saying my 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 in this in this verse scripture my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made complete and purpose watch this in your weakness and i i just figure man i need to just i need to get out of the way you know and and i don't need to allow my weakness to think that i'm actually weak because when i'm weak that's when i'm strong Paul went on to say, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness and just let people know it is not through my power. It is not through my ability. It is not through my self-effort. It is not through my strength. He says, but I want to let, let people know that that Christ's power is going to rest on me. And, and, and this is so important that we understand that the grace of God enabled and empowered Paul in his weakness. Now, what are what are areas of weaknesses in your life? God will empower you. He'll empower you in the middle of that. Maybe, you know, some weaknesses in your flesh or some weaknesses in even in your character or weaknesses in your physical body or weaknesses where your finances are concerned. I don't know, but God will empower a person in his weakness. That's not the time for you to give up, cave in and quit. 
That's the time for you to recognize when I am weak, I am strong. That's the time for you to just kind of, you know, brush your shoulders off and say, you know what? Uh, God got me, man. God got this. And uh, I'm going to trust him now in this situation like never before. So this is so powerful. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 now reassures us. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 reassures us that God is able to bless us abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that we need, we will abound or we will increase in every good work. <clears throat> God wants us to abound and God wants us to increase in every good work. Amen. So God's grace at work in us supplies us with everything that we need so that we can abound in every good work. And this is, I think, this is the message I'm just really trying to get people to take a hold of. God's grace is provision for every need. That God's grace is at work in us. Thank you, Lord. God's grace is at work in us because the Holy Spirit is at work in us and you can't separate the holy spirit from the grace of god god's grace is at work in us he supplies us with everything that we need and, and you know when i say this people are so quick to think about just the material supply but you need more than just material supply he supplies you with peace when you need it he supplies you with joy when you need it he supplies you with encouragement when you need it. I mean, what about those things? It, you know, it, it's it's just so important that we understand that, that there's so much more that's going on in the lives of people that the Holy Spirit is like, I've, I've got the supply. I've got the wisdom that you need. I mean, think about the number of times that you were in a situation and you just didn't know what to do. Well, God has the supply of wisdom to let you know what to do when you don't know what to do. I value that. I value that, you know? Um, and so that supply in us, he works in us and supplies us with everything that we need so that we can what? So that we can abound or increase in every good work. So he's going to help you uh, and supply for you so you can abound and increase in every good work. So, and, and let me tell you what a good work is. A good work is something born out of the love of God. A, a good work is something born out of the right attitude. It's not doing some some good work so you can get a trophy. It's not it's not getting some good work so you can get some, you know, attention, some congratulations, something that really takes the attention off God and just brings it back on you. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about, you know, so you can abound in and all those good works or works that are born out of love. OK, so God is more than enough for us, no matter what situation we face in our lives. He's more than enough. That's what it means when we started this off talking about God is sufficient. He is more than enough for us, no matter what situation we might be facing. So. You check out the situation that, that you're facing right now, even today. And I'm telling you that God is more than enough. Grace is sufficient for whatever situation you face in your life. He is all we need. It's such a simple message, but to try to penetrate the religious mindset and try to penetrate all of this stuff we have in our head uh about our self-effort and the things that we do to make stuff happen and and just to get people to understand that god's enough you don't need to you know worry or doubt or fret god's enough and so it's more than just a um fancy saying it's more than just a religion saying that god is enough it's more than that uh this this statement is born out of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, that's what I'm pushing to. It's like this stuff, all of this stuff um, works. Uh, if you start understanding that it's that personal time you spend with God. I mean, you know, 
this is not like magic. It's not like, uh, you know, abracadabra. Uh, I wish I had time to talk to you about what that really means. This is, you know God, God knows you, you spend time with him, y'all have a relationship with get together. And you're very confident at that particular point that, you know, God, um, he's more than enough. He's all we need. And, and I am, thank God at that point in my life, uh, where it's like, he's really all I need. He is all I need. And that helps me to live through the stuff that's going on in the world. It helps me to live through slander. It helps me to live through sickness and pain. It helps me to live when maybe lack knocks on the door. God's all I need. God's all I need. You might want to say that. God is all that I need. And so what happens sometimes is people like, you know, well, you know, God's all I need. But, you know, like the Bible says, God helps those who help themselves. The Bible doesn't say that. You see how we do that? The Bible doesn't say that. God helps those who need help. Okay. And this, this little thing about God helps those who help themselves. There you go again, thinking that God really needs you in the picture to get this job done. What God needs from you is to believe and to believe in the Jesus that he sent you. And that's what God needs from you. And, and, and to establish a relationship where you're walking with him so that in that relationship, God begins to direct you and lead you and guide you. The spirit of God was sent to lead and guide you into all of the truth of the grace of God. So it requires a for real personal relationship with Jesus. It's like, you heard me say this. I, I don't know. I probably said this over and over again. This is not a game. This is a personal relationship, a real personal relationship with Jesus. When we log off, you got one and you are walking with him every day. And, and so you, you then begin to benefit from that personal relationship with Jesus, this unseen partner that you have. And now you begin to see all of this is more than reading the Bible and saying, oh, I know this, I know this, and get all your fact, sh fact sheets together and then show off in front of somebody by letting them know how many scriptures you know and how you are anointed. And it becomes all about you. And this is all about Jesus. And this is humbling. It, it humbles me. It lets me know that I can't do it without Jesus. I can't live without Jesus. I don't want to do it without Jesus. I mean, there's just so much human stuff, distractions, it seems like all the time and every day. And dude, Jesus is is all is all I need. And I'm sure that a lot of you can agree with that. He's all that you need. And and that's what I'm doing. I'm like every day trying to grow in Jesus, every day trying to relate more with the Holy Spirit, every day, you know, just trying to have a life where my daily walk includes him. It's like I'm not ignoring him until Sunday comes and then I go to church. It's like that's my daily walk with him. And uh, that's why I think I've come to enjoy this time so much because it's become a part of my daily walk, just sharing with you and, uh, you know, taking my body as a living sacrifice uh, so that God can through can do in me and through me what he wants to do that day. And I, I just never really just honest with you, never thought he would do in me and through me, you know, these daily confessions and just sharing the things that are in my heart and that anybody would benefit from it. it it's it's a blessing of the Lord. So I'm encouraging everybody to reevaluate what it means to be a Christian and ask yourself, do you have a personal relationship with God who is a spirit more and just kind of similar to the relationships you say you have with other people and um, examine that. And if you're if you're, you know, doing something in relationship with other people that you're not doing with God, as far as that realness, it's like it's time to get that 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 realness of your relationship with God and, and you know, quit playing church, quit, you know, playing the role. It's just I I ain't even got time for that, man. It just stuff just freaks me out right now. Before it, it was not I don't I didn't it didn't whatever. But right now it's like you're just not going to 
you're just not going to really get a hold of this if you're not for real about an intimate relationship with God. It can't be religious relationship where it's all about I fulfilled my moments with you. So bless me. <laughs> you know, I'm in this for the relationship. If 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 you know, I'm not in this for what God can do for me. He's already done enough for me. Uh, I'm in it for the relationship and, you know, that, you know, so yeah, there I go again, talking about that whole deal, but praise God. So to me, grace is the very essence of who God is. Uh, so when I talk about grace, I'm not talking about just the, uh, principle, uh, uh involved in grace. Uh, I'm talking about the, the very essence of God. Grace is the very essence essence of who God is. I believe that. I believe that grace is the very essence of God. And, and you know, when I, the way I define grace, I told you, is this unmerited abounding favor, unmerited, excuse me, I'm unmerited abounding provision in the operation of God's unrestricted love. It, it, it's in the operation of God's unrestricted love, which means that y- there's nothing about you Accept your unbelief that could restrict the love of God. As long as you believe in him, there's no crazy about you that can restrict the, the, the operation of God's love that comes through Jesus Christ for you. And it especially shows up for people who absolutely depend on God for everything. OK, so the grace of God is continually at work in our lives as believers, as God's people. It is the essence. Grace is the essence of who God is. Did you know that grace always abounds more than sin? And that's what I'm saying. I mean, you're crazy. You can't stop this unrestricted love. Romans chapter five and 20 tells us that the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. Think of that. The law that so many people are protecting. And I and I respect it. Absolutely. But he says it was brought in originally so that the, the sin might increase. But where sin increased, he said, grace increased all the more. So what this means is that at any given moment, the grace of God ex- exceeds sin. Now, this does not give us as believers the license to sin, but the grace of God always exceeds sin. Not so you can sin more but you find yourself sinning less because grace is greater than than your sin. So as the recipients of God's grace, we are to be gracious to others. And uh, God let me know this years ago, you cannot teach the gospel of grace and not be gracious. Wow, wow. You cannot teach the gospel of grace or say that you walk in the grace of God and not be gracious to other people. That's so, so very important. So very important. Um, so grace is given to us to serve others and to exercise our spiritual gifts uh, for the building up of the church. And I, and I really believe that it's everything that God gives me is not for me. And I think we've got to begin to pause sometime and say, um, you know, God, you're doing this in my life or you did this in my life. All right. So what do you want me to do with this? I mean, God doesn't give you a spiritual gift for your own benefit. He gives you spiritual gifts so you can benefit somebody else. I mean, you exercise your spiritual gifts for the building up of the church. But we cannot allow the spirit of mammon to enter into our lives. And we're no longer interested in building the church up. We want to build ourselves up, you know, and we're going to, you know, we just got to make sure that we really, you know, keep that in mind that I'm blessed to be a blessing, that I have spiritual gifts for the building up of the church, that I even pray for the building up of the church. Your prayer time should not be all about you. Lord, bless me. Lord, help me. Lord, no, 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 no. All that I have and all that I've been blessed with and anointed to do is for the building up of the church. So grace enables us not to be self-centered, but rather to serve others, to forgive, to overlook offenses, as well as to do everything else while completely relying on the strength of God. So 
uh, Philippians 4.13, you know, uh, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Uh, this becomes a uh, key in a lot of things that that we we are to do and how we live our lives. So, hey, man, I, I'm I uh, I'm just getting into this thing where I'm just wanting to really teach. Um, uh, I'm just, you know, God is there. Talk to him, spend time with him. Uh, I think your life is is headed towards the best place that it's ever been in. Don't forget God, man. Let his grace minister to you. God's working in you. He's working through you. He's perfecting things. And he's promised to finish the work before on the day of Jesus Christ. So it's all good. You're good. And uh, I pray that God's riches and best will continue to be yours as you seek him first. Have an amazing, amazing Monday. Amen. Don't let don't let nothing get in your way today. Just, you know, be thankful, be grateful and move into that higher life. OK, before I go, uh, we're coming to Houston, Texas, February 23rd, 24th. We're going to have a family reunion in Houston, Texas. So all of our partners, our friends, those of you on Daily Confessions, our e-church from Texas, Let's load the place up. We will have morning sessions there as well, where we deal and we do our morning confessions out as we're doing here. So join me in Houston, Texas, February 23rd, 24th. Please go ahead and register now. Um, you know, I'm not selling tickets for any of these events. So it's almost like, you know, first come, first serve. It's, it's like, you know, I don't, I'm, I, I'm, I may have to eventually start using tickets to make sure that when people register, they are guaranteed to have a seat. But for right now, until I can see if you guys want to show up, it's whoever gets there first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, register so we'll know and try to do our best to secure venues to kind of help out. But uh, hey. Love you guys, man. It's going to be a great day for you. Just make your mind up that you're going to enjoy this day in Jesus name. Hey, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you so much. Bye bye.